All right, welcome back to the KM6LYW Radio Warehouse and Emporium Extravaganza. So <laughs> what are we looking at today? We are looking at a satellite uh, image, uh, footprints, uh, things coming over the United States. I'm here in uh, Sacramento, California. I don't know if you can see that. But one satellite of notice is uh, called Meteor M2. Um, this is a Russian weather satellite. Uh, I know in my previous video we talked about the NOAA satellites, which use an analog encoding for their video. But the Meteor satellites actually use a PSK encoding, so we get a digital image, much higher resolution, and I, th I think they have like an RGB camera too, so you can get a, uh, an actual color image. Um, not false color, but actual uh, color image. And so Meteor M2 is up over, uh, it's over, uh, I don't know, Sweden right now, and it'll be making a pass here in a few minutes. Uh, there's a couple of different pieces of software we can use on the Raspberry Pi or your Linux desktop, which is what I'm using here. Uh, the one I like to use is called GLRPT, uh, not for any particular reason, but it's just it was it was available to me. And uh, of course, we've got to GitHub to get the source code for things. Um, this isn't necessarily in the Debian or Pi apt repository, so this is probably one you're going to have to build yourself. I'm using an older Linux distribution here. Um, I think it's Ubuntu 18.04. I know I fear change, but uh, uh, what you can do is get, sometimes, sometimes if a newer, the latest version of a piece of software doesn't compile on your system, what you can go is click on the tags thing here, and you can just get an older version of the software. Because um, I couldn't get version 2.6.1 of GLRPT to compile, and that's the software we're looking at is GLRPT. That's the software that decodes the Meteor uh, PSK uh, feeds. But what I did find is the 250 did compile. Um, you can download one right here, this tar.gz. I can click on that and I can save it in this directory. And then I open a shell in that directory, which you guys should be able to see here. And I'm just going to compile it because um, it's a good experience. You know how to download source code and compile it. I'm going to do an ls here. The file I just downloaded is this GLRPT250 because that was the tag I wanted that I knew would compile on this older version of Ubuntu. Um, I don't think we're missing too many features, honestly. Um, so let's uh, let's ex let's unzip that, so to speak, and we use the, the tape archive command tar. Don't be afraid of that. And we're going to use ZXVF. That's Zulu X-ray Victor Foxtrot. And this just extracts this tar archive that's been compressed um, into a folder called glrpt-250. So I'm going to cd, change directory into that folder, like that. And I'm going to do an ls. It has all kinds of cool stuff there, but I don't know what to do now, so I'm just going to go back to the glrpt github page, and there's almost always a way to compile it here, if we look closely. Um, so yeah, there it is. This is how, we do, how we're going to compile it from source. So make dir build. I'm going to do that here. Make directory build. Okay, we did that. I'm going to change directory into the build directory, which I just created. If I do an ls, there's no files there or anything. And then I'm going to run CMake. And this is where the problem was with the versions of Ubuntu. I just didn't have the newest version of CMake. So I'm going to run CMake uh, with these options. And there it goes. It basically wrote the configuration files, so it's ready to compile now. Uh, it's written in C. And now I'm just going to run make. This does the C compiler. And we wait for a second. Actually, it's kind of nice. You can see the percentage there. And we're running make. And if you can, hopefully you got a fast enough PC, otherwise that satellite's going to pass by the time this thing compiles. So it did compile, but it hasn't installed yet. So the GLRPT is just sitting in this directory. What we want to do is install it under the system uh, folders. Uh, there was a warning here. Um, this was just a dash W warning. It didn't abort the compilation. Um, Implicit function declaration, you don't care about that. And the, the important thing is this is built target GLRPT, which it did. And then uh, using the instructions again, we want to sudo make install. Enter my root password, my sudo password, and it just installed it into user bin GLRPT. Um, so we can run it from there. Now to run the program, uh, since it's in user bin, it's in our search path, we can just run GLRPT, hit return. And here it is. This is the GLRPT program that we just downloaded from source, or in source format, compiled, and installed. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and minimize this window. And I'm going to minimize the GitHub GLRPT 
repository. And uh, so here is, uh, so, so what's cool about this one is we're using the RTL SDR dongle again on our PC. Um, it, it's really cheap, it's like 30 bucks on Amazon. This is it right here. Um, get this, 30 bucks, and you're totally decoding anything, well not HF, but VHF and UHF bands you're getting with this. And I don't remember what the actual frequency was on this. I think it's in the 130 megahertz range. Um, you guys can correct me. But get an RTL SDR. I've got one plugged into the PC down here. And it's hooked up to an antenna on my roof. Just a omnidirectional roll-up J-pole. that kind of woven over an old fly rod. <laughs> Works great. All right. So this is the, the, the radio device we're using. And what's cool about this is it, it sees the device. Uh, the RTL or GLRPT sees that radio device and uses it. So we don't have to run GQRX. We don't have to run sort of any kind of tuning software. We don't have to set the frequency. GLRPT knows all that stuff. In fact, the frequency is up here. It's 137.1 megahertz. Um, what, what I want to do is I want to right click on the, the this area here and select Meteor 2-172K. Uh, that's the satellite that's about to pass. It's usually the default. And let's look over here. Where is Meteor 2-1? It is way up in the north here. Um, and according to this, it will be rising at 925. Um, so I've got about 10 minutes before this starts rising. So what I'm going to probably do is pause you guys. And when this starts rising, I am going to fire up or press the start button here on GLRPT. So here we go. We're going to warp through time. Uh, I'll see you in just 10 minutes as uh, Meteor M2-1 starts rising. And through the miracle of editing, uh, we are in fact warped through time and it's hard to see up here, but in the upper right corner you'll see that the Meteor M2 satellite is rising from the north. Still ascending here. Um, so let's go over to GLRPT, which we just compiled and ran. And I'm going to right click, select satellite, Meteor M2-1. There's only two of them up there. This is dash one. <laughs> I don't know if they knew they were going to make two. Then we're going to click Start. And it automatically opens that uh, RTL SDR dongle that I showed you a picture of, that silver thing. So you don't need any tuners or anything, and it just does the rest. Um, so what's cool about the Meteor satellites is they actually use PSK or QPSK encoding for the images. So this is an actual digital image. When we looked at the NOA satellites, that was strictly an analog you know, noise that we were interpreting. and. Uh, I don't know a lot about the Meteor satellites. They do have different modes. Um, it looks like we're getting an RGB mode right now. I think when the satellite thinks it's dark, it'll go ahead and do like a black and white and infrared. Um, but the satellite, I, I don't know, maybe the clock's wrong on it. Sometimes that's all you get is just like a black and white visual and infrared. Um, but this one, I think we're getting RGB images out of. Um, you can see in the upper left-hand corner, we've got three images. And uh, the, the stuff over here on the right, I mean, you, you, you don't need to know what this stuff means. Um, if you are in third semester calculus, you'll probably know what a fast Fourier transform is. And you'll see the actual visual representation of the, the transforms here. Uh, this thing, QPSK, this, this little grid thing is a... Uh, this is what we call the constellation, and we want to see, like, if in a perfect signal, we would see a dot in the center of each square. In a less than perfect signal, you know, we see constellations in each square, so uh, it's starting to tighten up. But before this, if there's no satellite, it's just random noise. There's no coherency. Um, but FFT uh, can make order, find order in chaos, uh, fast Fourier transforms. Um, you know, find an actual signal in a group of signals. Uh, that's what it's good for. So we'll see, that's actually that constellation is tightening up now. Um, the meteor is about 25 degrees off the horizon here. So this is an oblique pass, like I said in a previous video. That's usually good for if you just have an omnidirectional dipole on your roof, which is what we have here. Um, I honestly don't know what some of these other little bars are. I know that green is good and red is bad. So <laughs> the greener the better. So if you got a green green bars here, uh, they're just signal quality. Um, yeah, you're, you're getting an image. And when these drop into the red for any reason, that means there was some sort of you know interference or, or, or signal dropout. I do have a lot of trees immediately to the west here. So, you know, as it slips in and out of the trees, we're going to see these uh, signal levels go in and out. But yeah, I think we're getting a pretty good image. Um, what we'll see here in a second, uh, once this is done decoding, it'll write out a uh, 
uh, PNG or JPEG image, you know, of, of all three you know, RGB images and uh, it'll do a combo too, like an overlay. So you actually see it in, in pretty decent color as long as they overlay properly. So yeah, I think we're getting a decent signal. There's some, some black bars here. Um, that happens. I don't know if I can make this bigger. Does this help? Not really. Let's see if we can make the images bigger so you can see them. It just kind of... Uh, Increases the size of the, the graphs and whatnot. Plus, we got some signal dropout while I was doing that. I don't know. Is that coincidental? I don't know. I'm not going to mess with it anymore, though. All right. Still in the green, just barely. And what I'm going to do, um, since you don't want to watch paint dry hair, which is basically what we're doing, I'm going to go ahead and pause this. And when this is getting close to done, we'll resume. So let's fast forward to the end of this pass. Uh, Meteor M2 is in fact setting right now, so well, we'll see, see what we get. All right, see you in a second. And we have warped through time. Uh, the Meteor M2 satellite is setting, um, and we got kind of an average image. Um, I always f <laughs> forget that I've got trees on the west side of the house, and that's usually where you see these, these black bars. So yeah, I guess if it was a more of an Eastern pass, that would be better. In fact, it would be more over the continental United States. But it looks like we got an image, at least something we can look at. And Meteor M2 is in fact setting to the Southwest. And it looks like signal's basically gone. The constellation's wiped out and uh, yeah, there's, there's just nothing there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I think what I do is click start to stop. And this is like a Microsoft thing. <laughs> so I can go ahead and click that. And yeah, you click start to stop, and then you'll notice here in the uh, in the log here it says saving image. So we've got three images. We got the RGB and a combo, and those get stashed in your home directory in a folder called GLRPT uh, images. So that's home, whatever your home is, GLRPT slash images. And there should be some new stuff here. Usually click by the modified date. Hopefully there's some new stuff here. The problem is it uses the the date <laughs> when when you're sorting it, it it it's problematic on the dates here. Let me see if I can find one here. Yeah, I take that back on the path. You know, this newer version of GLRPT actually uses home dot cache slash glrpt and that's where you're going to find your images in fact i'd use the find command to find these i put you on pause while i was looking around so yeah the newer versions put images here that's a strange place for the images but anyways um so home crager dot cache slash glrpt is where these images were just placed and we can kick click on each one in turn so i don't know which one is which they're not labeled here so this is channel zero that's probably the red spectrum this is channel one, which is probably the green spectrum. That's a little darker, yeah. And then uh, this is probably where we're seeing blue. I don't know. I'm just kind of guessing at this. And then the third one, which is the most interesting, is the combo one, where we overlay red, green, and blue and give them some color here. So this is the Pacific Ocean. Uh, if you can visualize California, uh, San Francisco is right about here where my mouse is. <laughs> I've got a pretty good bar over it. And I can see my house from here. No, I can't. Actually, let's uh, let's change the zoom level to 1.1, and let's and we can really zoom in to see how much detail is here. So again, here's California. Uh, we've got Oregon and Washington, and uh, up here we've got uh, the islands of uh, northern Washington and Canada. So yeah, back in California, we see the Central Valley, we see uh, Folsom Lake, and uh, my house is uh, just up here between these two river valleys that you can barely see. But you can see there's a lot of detail. Uh, the corners of the images are a little soft, um, you know, like over here on the right. But, you know, as you look towards the middle of the image, and these are pretty sharp. I mean, the cloud definition here is pretty, pretty amazing. Um, even all the way on, on the bottom of the image. But, you know, the left side here, you can see, is a little bit, is a little soft. Um, there's no political, there's no lines on this or anything. You, you really kind of have to know what you're looking at to see stuff. Um, you know, I can see Lake Tahoe right here. I can see Pyramid Lake, you know, so I kind of I kind of know California is in this area. But the uh, resolution is much higher than the, uh, the NOAA satellites, uh, the United States satellites. Um, you know, actually, there was a fire up here. I wonder if we can see that. Yeah, I think this little white area by Pyramid Lake 
is an actual forest fire. I know they closed the highway there. So anyways, you can get not just meteorological data, but you can actually see uh, world events happening under these Russian satellites. All right, so GLRPT is the software you want to use to decode these and just get a plain old RTL SDR radio dongle, plug it into some antenna you've got on the roof. Hopefully you get a better image than I did. These had a lot of black spots in them, but uh, again, you know, the trees are problematic. Uh, on that side of my yard. All right, so let me know in the comments, or maybe, I don't know, maybe you can show me your pictures that you get. Did you, do any of you possibly get a pristine image? I mean, I, I very, very rarely can I get a full image without some black bars. There's always some dropouts. You know, maybe if we had a higher gain antenna or directional antenna, uh, we could do better. All right, so that's the Mus Russian meteor satellites uh, decoding using GLRPT uh, on a Linux PC here, which is essentially the same as a Raspberry Pi. So if you got your Raspberry Pis, plug in your radios into that, your antennas, and uh, see if you can decode uh, images from Russian weather satellites. Uh, like and subscribe, and uh, if you want to contribute to the channel here, uh, check out to patreon.com slash km6lyw. Uh, every penny counts here. Uh, making YouTube productions and amateur radio software. So if you are a patron, um, you do get early access to software from KM6LYW Radio. Uh, check out the DigiPi videos uh, if you want to uh, have fully contained headless, keyboardless, Raspberry Pi Zero based uh, digital radio uh, device that you can control uh, you know, with your phone or a web browser. Uh, so you'll get early access to that software as well. Uh, KM6LYW Radio, and I'm clear. Thanks, guys.